In the meantime, we are still keeping an eye on the virus, as we said at the outset of the show, and the spikes in cases right here. Um, obviously, all of this changes if they ever come up with treatment or a vaccine. You've heard a lot about Dr. Anthony Fauci saying much the same. He's optimistic maybe by the end of the year, early next year. Um, something like that could be available. There are a lot of comp companies competing on, on that front. Pfizer and BioNTech, for example, uh, are getting some early good findings from data on an ongoing vaccine study of their own. Dr. Devi Nampiarempo uh, joins us right now. Doctor, um, the vaccine, any vaccine from any company, whoever gets it or close to it, that's a game changer, isn't it? Definitely. I mean, this is some promising news that has come out today. It's promising with a few caveats. So they're looking at different doses of this vaccine, and a relatively low dose seems to create antibodies in the volunteers, relatively safely also. So the issue there is that in terms of traditional, our traditional studies of vaccines and viruses, we've looked at antibodies as the way to tell if a vaccine is effective, if it's something that's allowing you to fight the virus. And so that's what they're using as their measure. But now lately with coronavirus, there have been a lot of questions about actually if antibodies protect you or not. So we've used them in terms of treatment. If a person has been sick and developed antibodies, that person can donate antibodies to other people who are still sick. But we're also seeing people who had little or no symptoms who have antibodies, and it's unclear in those cases if the antibodies actually protect them. So there's a little bit of a contrast. Uh, the good news is that this vaccine seems to be creating antibodies in certain folks, at least if they get two doses, and, and granted it's a small number of volunteers. But that being said, their measure, the scientists are using antibodies as their measure, but that may not be an effective measure in the grand scheme of things because, for example, the FDA has said that what they really want is not to see whether there are antibodies, but to see whether the vaccine actually prevents illness in people who are exposed to the coronavirus. What do you think, Doctor, these spikes that we've been seeing in some states having to reverse uh, phase in reopenings and the like, does it worry you? I haven't seen a similar spike uh, of any magnitude, for example, in deaths, if anything, to reverse and even in hospitalizations, minus, again, what's been happening uh, in Arizona and maybe in Texas. But what do you what do you make of it all? Well, on the one hand, it kind of tells us that there's a lot we don't understand about the virus. I mean, the numbers are going up in terms of the diagnoses. Some people say it's because we're doing more testing. Some people say it's because of the reopening. I think it's probably a combination of both and maybe some other factors as well. But I agree with you. I mean, the key numbers to me are really how many people are being hospitalized, because what we care about is not whether somebody has a positive test or whether they have mild symptoms, but whether they're sick enough to be hospitalized and whether or not they die. Right. Those are the most important measures. So because those numbers, they are going up, but they're not going up as quickly, especially in states like New York, where we've had a lot of reopening taking place. We've had protests. We've had a lot of different things going on, but the numbers don't quite match. So it's it's unclear if there's something that is protecting certain folks from the virus, if the people who are most susceptible actually already got infected, or if the numbers are much, much higher than we actually think, and therefore people who've had it, who now have developed antibodies or some other way of fighting the virus, if they're acting as a shield towards the virus. So a lot of things that are, are not clear. In terms of reopening, you know, many people say we should slow it down. I think there's a, a you yeah. know, there's pros and cons to that. If we slow it down, maybe we will slow the number of cases, maybe. But on the other hand, if we look at history, let's say, for example, Spanish flu or the influenza pandemic back in 1918, you know, that spread across the world. And it's thought to be one of the factors in terms of revolutions, let's say, in Africa and in India, across Asia, because of all the civil unrest and social upheaval. So I think you know, if we do things that harm the economy and harm people's quality of life, that could also uh, ignite a little bit more of that social upheaval that we're already seeing. Yeah, it's a tough balance. Dr. Debbie Nampia Parempo, thank you very, very much. Good catching up with you.